I'd rather do something really well and make less money than do it bad and make a lot. And my name's Malcolm Gillies and I'm the owner and managing director of Gillies Group. So the original concept of Gillies Group was um, all things property. So effectively it was an end-to-end -end product where people would come in, we would uh, develop the section, we'd build the house, arrange their mortgage and then sell the house for them. I don't look at success necessarily as financial, but we have, you know, over the years done reasonably well. I, I believe that we have to have a win-win strategy. We need to make a profit building houses, but I don't want that profit to be at the expense of the contractors that work for us. And I totally believe that he who takes the largest risk should get the largest share of the cake. We've built over 20% of the available stock in a city. That's a large contribution. If you take that and then work out how much money that we're putting back in by building those. And I feel really proud of the fact that, you know, we are contributing because it's providing homes. It's providing opportunities for people to get apprenticeships. It's providing work. And we do things and go where other people don't. But if we look at Wallaceville, Wallaceville came up for sale. We went through a long drawn out process and managed to secure it. By the time it's finished, there's 900 houses. I think what's really exciting about Wallaceville is the different types of houses. We're lucky to have a very, very good team, put a lot of work into the design. Um, we've got parks, we've got single story houses, we've got comprehensive. You know, the uptake's been really good. A really sort of integrated communities developed and now yeah, we're extremely proud of it. It's given people uh, the opportunity to buy different types of homes. There wasn't a lot of um, that type of product on the market, but also a large amount of our buyers have come from out of the area. So, you know, Wallaceville, as in all our developments, have brought people into the area. For us, when we look at a subdivision, it's not just about how many houses you can get in there. Would you want to live there? You know, you want to drive back down there in 10 years and still be proud of it. I haven't developed anything that I'm ashamed to go back to. I'm really pleased in what we've created as a team. I was out there looking um, for large blocks of land. Sort of seen it over probably the last 15 years, Plimpton. Periodically it come onto the market. It was identified as a growth area. You know, once I get my mind fixed on something, it seems to happen. You know, what the mind can conceive and believe it will achieve. Well, I looked at the land and went and saw the owner and over a period of a number of years, put a deal together. And um, that was it. It's massive, you know. Um, at this stage, we're thinking maybe two and a half, three thousand sites. But look, we thought originally Wallaceville was only going to be four or five hundred, and it's nine hundred. Look, there's lots of opportunities. It's just the site, you know, the topography, the views, um, the proximity to Transmission Gully. You know, it's going to have everything. And the real exciting thing and the challenge is we've got to make it a place where people want to live. And so we've been thinking of all the different things, walkways, amenity, how people are going to feel about living there. You know, not everyone gets the opportunity to make such a, a difference to people's lives. It's part of the Northern Growth Strategy over there, which is potentially 10,000 homes. Nothing over there, and that is going to happen unless Plimpton Farm kicks it off. So I think it's going to be the catalyst um, for providing 10,000 homes in the Wellington region. It will be always at the front end of the market and developing to what people want. And hopefully it can be an expression of what Gillies Group's all about. We do it properly. At the moment, we're doing around 80 houses a year. When we go to Plimerton, our plan is to double that and we'll run two arms. We'll be building in Upper Hutt and we'll run another side of the business over in Plimerton. We have the license for Golden Homes for the lower half for the North Island. 10, 15 years ago, Golden Homes had a product and it was like um, a cookie cutter. They had a book of plans and you sold either A, B, C or D. And we just built standard Golden Homes products. 
as time went on, we found that we needed to have a different product that they didn't have. So even though we're with Golden Homes, we've gone away from building just their designs and we actually design our own house and then put it into the Golden Home system. We've been selling houses in this market, which is probably the most depressed market we've had for quite some time, and other people are. And the reason we can do that is because we're building the house and we own the land. We have the ability to reduce the price of the land and our margin on the house. Still make a little bit of money, but keep everyone going. Whereas if you don't own the land, you've got a fixed cost there and you've got very little to move on. It's extremely valuable. You would not sell the volume of sections that we do if we were building the houses. It adds to the whole process. We're pretty well onto it. We've got a really good feel. We understand what the market is wanting, what they'll pay for it, what size land they want, what size house. Fundamentally, we're pretty focused on developing land, building the houses. That's one side of the business. And then another part of Gillies Group is managing commercial property. And obviously, you know, our investments then are commercial property. So the money we make, we tend to invest in commercial property. And that then develops into a whole lot of things like Brewtown. And the scope of Brewtown is 50,000 square metres of industrial commercial space. Out of that 50,000, there's about 15,000 is now bars and entertainment precincts. There's around 70 tenants in total. So it's a reasonably large commercial development. You know, when you look back, it's quite frightening for a lot of people, but it was 50 acres, 50,000 square meters of building, and it was empty. But it was really important, and I identified early on, if we didn't get the people in to make the bars successful, then they couldn't pay their rent. So Brewtown was set up myself as a marketing company. We've developed that where every week we've got something going on. Rock concerts, you know, boxing, car shows. We invested or supported the guys in an entertainment park. Once again, because they would bring in more people than the bars, but the people would come in to do entertainment, then they'd go to the bars. So a lot of the things that we've done over there, we've still had that motivation is to support the people that we've got over there. And what we have created and are going to continue to create at Brewtown is a place where on a Saturday and a Sunday people are congregating. I knew it couldn't be a tyre factory again, but look at it now. It's as, as much value to the community than it was when it was a tyre factory. Really, really proud of it. Um, I really enjoy it. At the same time, it's, um, it's an asset. Everything has been to basically support and bring back into the community those things that were lost. The Central Institute of Technology obviously closed almost overnight. So, you know, one of the goals that we had with my partners in the Central Institute of Technology when we formulated NZCIS was to get two or 3,000 people back here again and create something positive. When we purchased it, we looked at how we would repurpose it and utilize what was here rather than just knock it down, which a lot of people were looking at. So consequently, we spent a lot of money here refurbishing it. 98% of our tenants here are government tenants. When we purchased it, it was five million odd, and it's probably worth 220 million now. And we spent a lot of money on it, but what we have done is created value, lots of jobs. This is as much value, if not more, I mean, we've created something here that Kevin and I are both extremely proud of, and that is we have got a world-class facility. We had the Swedish woman staying here. They said they've never seen anything like it. You know, we're only just starting here. Goodness knows where this can go to. When we first started the idea and developing it, um, the people that are now paying us money to be here, you couldn't get them to come here. So we had to adopt the strategy of well, let's just build it, believe in it, and see what happens. Man, proof's in the pudding. There's a commercial side to it, then there's the accommodation side, and then there's the high-performance side. At the moment, the commercial side is supporting the accommodation while they get up and running. 
Um, without the commercial side, with all the tenants paying their leases, it would have been very difficult. But ultimately, the accommodation business will basically support the high performance part, and the high performance part will support the accommodation. What we have here is um, high quality accommodation. We have a green room, which is half the size of a rugby field. It's five stories high so they can do all their inside training there. We have a thousand square metre gym that is totally fitted out. Once again, all the technology in there is the largest interactive screen in the world. We have hydrotherapy pools, we have hot and cold plunge pools, infrared sauna. We've got four fields, state of the art. Those fields, and there's nothing better in New Zealand. The lights, they can play night football. Um, we have cameras on all the fields. There's technology in the ground. We spent $8 million wiring this place up just so that we can collect information and we can store it. So we've created something quite unique here. When you call it high performance, I can tell you that we have a massive system here that's gonna collect and store information and will ultimately generate income and that income will be shared with the players and the members so that's what's quite unique so it's more than just the training it's the rehabilitation and we will grow from that i've always been quite vocal in the way i see things it's written all over our windows that it's not all about money it's about community family they're really important, but ultimately it's a win-win. I want everyone to win. They should win in direct correlation to how much risk they take. Companies are successful if they have um, a succession plan. This is a family business. There's people coming through that will continue, hopefully, to see the values and support those values that we have, which is, you know, supporting the community. You make money out of this community, you need to put it back in and you need to help people that are less fortunate than yourselves. You know, we've got some exciting projects. Our next one's the race course. Um, it's probably the biggest project that we've ever, um, ever done. And, you know, I'm working flat out on that. It keeps me, keeps me motivated and wanting to, to be involved. I'm empowering people at the moment to um, take responsibility for their areas. And if anything, that's one of the strengths, I think, um, that Gillies Group has is that we do empower people. You're only as good as the people you have. So I'm fortunate in that I've got some long-standing staff. The likes of Dennis Cook, who's been with me nearly 15 years. Um, Lindsay Cunningham, our CEO. He's been with me, God, be 15 years, but we grew up together. We tend to keep people um, for a long time. That suggests to me that we're giving them what they need and we value them. We've got a lot of good people, a lot of good consultants, there's a lot of ideas, but driving them is our values. The next generation see the value in the staff and the people they have and look after them.